All right, welcome everyone. This is the info session for the 2022 RFP for the 2023 Human Services Bus Ticket Program. And we can move to the next slide here. So on today's agenda, we'll do some introductions, um, letting you know about the Human Services Bus Ticket Program, the eligibility requirements, and the agency agreements that you will come into if you are selected, um, the application process, what that might look like for you and Zoom grants and the ticketing details, and then we'll close. So prior to get into this one, um, I'll introduce myself. My name is Ken Jackson, and I am the new uh, program administrator for the Human Services Bus Ticket Program with the Department of Community and Human Services. And I'm here with Devin today, and I'll let Devin do his introduction. Hi, yeah, I'm Devin Koenig, he's he, him pronouns, and I, um, I'm also on the homeless housing programs team. I've been uh, administering the bus ticket program um, uh, for a, a few months now, and um, Ken and I are in the process of uh, handing this off. So he'll be your contact going forward, but I'm just here to um, kind of bridge bridge that while we, while we do the transition, so. Yeah, appreciate you, Devin. Um and their partnership on this work here, handing it off to me. So let's get into the program here. So the Human Services Bus Ticket Program, it was, it was established in 1993 by King County Council, um, and it is written into King County Code um, 4A.700.210. Um, the annual funding for the program, well, well that, that code establishes the annual funding for the program. And the purpose of the program is to help improve transportation access for persons experiencing homelessness and or who are low income. Um, the allocations are awarded to the human services agencies via request for proposal, which we are currently in right now. Um, agencies will pay 10% of the ticket value in 2023. And um, the, the allotment for this program has not changed since 2018. That allotment value has been uh, $4,400,000 um, plus dollars uh, a year. Uh, in 2019, the agencies we awarded were uh, 600 or 169, sorry. In 2020, we awarded 200 plus agencies. In 2021, we awarded 161 agencies. And this last year's round, we awarded 144 agencies. I think some of these numbers, the last couple of years, uh, agencies may have been trying to figure out what their services look like during the pandemic. Um, so I'll be curious to see what this year looks like, but we can move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so understanding the human services bus ticket program, there are two um, different sections within King County who administer different parts of the program. The first part is, uh, this is in collaboration absolutely with King County Metro, um, and they handle the sale and tracking of allocations, uh, the process for purchasing the human services bus tickets, um, the ticketing and issuing questions, fare changes, which we'll get into later in these slides, and any Orca lift um, transactions, they also handle those. Um, and at the bottom there, you see the ticketing email. So any of those questions regarding those points there, you can email the Metro side for the Human Services Bus Ticket Program. And then now we get to the Department of Community and Human Services side, which is myself and Devin. Um, we handle the RFP process. Um, we look at, we monitor the program concerns and complaints. We monitor the usage logs for the program. We conduct, um, as at least right now, we conduct uh, virtual monitoring visits. We'll see what that looks like in the future as we continue to move through the pandemic. And we also run any reallocation processes. So anything underspent uh, for the program year, um, there are opportunities to reallocate those funds. And we also run, run that process. And for any questions for the for our side on the human services bus ticket program for any of those points. And honestly, if you have just any questions in general, just feel free to email us at the human services bus ticket program email listed there. This just leads to our program website and post this session here. We will post these slides here so you'll have access to each of the slides and the links and everything that you need. So program eligibility, or sorry, agency eligibility. Um, it is for um, agencies 
Number one, you must be a nonprofit, a 501c3 agency, a housing authority, local government, or federally recognized tribe. <laughs> you must serve persons who are experiencing homelessness and are low income. Um, you must be able to disperse the tickets to eligible individuals for services um, critical to persons and residential stability. Number four, uh, you must be able to purchase the tickets by this coming year's deadline is September 15th. Sorry, last year was the 16th. This coming year's uh, deadline for 2023 to purchase your allotment is September 15th. Um, and you must be able to disperse those tickets to clients prior to December 31st of 2023. Uh, if part of the, if you were part of this last year's allotment of the 2022 Human Services Bus Ticket Program, you must have turned in and uh, completed usage logs for June, or sorry, from January through June of 2022, just to make sure we're in good standing um, from, from this uh, last year's program, because we need to be able to look and make sure that the tickets are actually being dispersed there, and we can move to the next slide. So there are a few, there are a few agreements. Um, if you are selected um, to receive an allotment from this program that you will come into, um, you will need to understand and apply the policies and procedures for this program. Um, and again, those policies and procedures are within the application inside of Zoom Grants. Um, and you will, once selected, you will enter into a memorandum of agreement with our department, the Department of Community and Human Services. Um, another agreement is you must return a signature list of authorized agency reps. Um, these reps are folks who can purchase and pick up the tickets. Um, and that we will get into what that might look like in terms of returning that back to Metro later on in these slides. And there's a few things that we will, um, you will be required to adhere to um, in this program that is dispersing to intended recipients. So only clients can receive or the people that you are serving can receive the tickets. So the tickets can't be used by staffs, volunteers or, or interns and you will be required to safeguard the tickets, AKA proper storage uh, for the tickets. Um, you will need to track client and program level distribution so by submitting annual, semi-annual program level usage logs two times per year. Um, and if you have any lost tickets, you will need to report those within three days of discovery. And excuse me, um, we previously mentioned the purchasing deadline for your year's allotment. This coming year in 2023, that'll be September 15th. And for this program, these tickets are not to be resold. And we can move to the next slide. So we are planning to hold a couple info sessions because uh, we want to give you all an opportunity to ask us questions. However, Devin has uh, put in, in the application in Zoom grants an FAQ. So if there's anything prior to the next info session, you can check out that document. But we are definitely looking forward to engaging with you all to get more questions from you. But until then, we can move to the next slide. Excuse me. So here are some key dates uh, for the RFP. We we are on a couple of these dates or have passed a couple of these dates uh, so far. Uh, we've announced that the RFP is open. We did that on Tuesday, the 15th this week. And we are now in the info session for this program. Uh, the next key date is for technical assistance requests. Uh, that deadline is November 19th. The next date um, to note is we closed this RFP on December 15th of this year. And then at which point we will be reviewing the applications through the remainder of December. And within January, we will issue out notices of award for the awarded agencies. And post that we will, um, agencies will sign the memorandum of agreements. Uh, and that is contained within Zoom grants to make it uh, easy for you all. So a few links here um, within our info session here. So we have the actual link to the Zoom Grants application. And the next link is the link to um, the, our department's RFP um, page. But within that link, there is actually um, an example of what are our guide to Zoom Grants, to using Zoom Grants uh, within that second link there. 
And the third link is just a link to the Human Services Bus Ticket Program website. Okay, so the application process in Zoom Grants, uh, these are things to note. Um, so using Zoom Grants, it's an online uh, tool for requests for proposal applications. That's at least what we use here at the Department of Community and Human Services of King County. Um, each Zoom Grants application is officially associated with a single account. Um, each account is owned by a single user and single email address. Please note these things. Uh, the owner can grant other users access to the application within Zoom Grants. Um, and just this tip here, uh, we recommend that there only be one primary account for the King County RFPs using Zoom Grants. We highly encourage the use of a universal account like, a, say, a grants officer at nonprofitabc.org, um, as opposed to an individual email. Either way, be sure to share the account credentials to ensure continued access to the account. So um, there are changes to note um, here. Uh, there was really, um, in terms of questions in the application, there's one major change. And I wanna give the rationale behind that change uh, before talking about the specific questions, which I listed here. So the Department of Community and Human Services offered grant, offers grant application and capacity building consulting um, and prioritizes requests from small agencies defined as an agency, an agency whose budget is $4 million or less and has no more than 20 FTE staff. Um, this, this, these questions below, they help us understand how many agencies uh, meet these criteria. So the two questions that we added are number 25, uh, what, is your, what is the total number of staff in your organization? And number 26, uh, what is your agency's total budget in the last year. So that'll help us capture you know, what this department defines as a small small agency. Um, and, and really that is to make sure that we're providing the support for you all to move through the application, um, to make sure that uh, you know we're hitting all the points that we need to hit and that we're not missing anything uh, in that application. We wanna make sure that we are giving you the, the support that you need uh, to continue to provide the great services that your program provides. So um, post-award in Zoom grants, um, you can anticipate again um, that you will enter into a memorandum of agreement and you will be submitting your semi-annual usage logs uh, within Zoom grants, um, lost or stolen tickets. Um, we, you'll also be noting those and reaching out to us and to notify us. Uh, and any additional allocation requests, uh, we post the, or prior to the purchasing deadline, you know, we'll be reaching out to see if any agencies are looking to, um, who have spent down or will be spent down um, their full allocation. If there's any reallocation requests, we have had a few this year who have been granted um, additional allocations, just FYI. Um, okay, so to, to prepare, for filling out this application and completing that um, and returning it to us, uh, just ensure that the appropriate staff have access to the RFP. Um, and you can refer back to the previous slide of, you know, just an example of a general login that you can provide to your agency that everyone who needs access to fill out the application can have that. Um, and make sure Zoom grants messages are not going to spam also. And this is just a quick uh, screen example of what you'll see once you click on the link that'll take you to the Zoom Grants application. Um, one thing to note, if you already have uh, an account with Zoom Grants, the furthest right uh, uh, screenshot there shows you at the very top right. If you already have a previous account, um, log into your previous account. You don't have to create a brand new one. If you've been working with King County and, and applying to our funding opportunities within Zoom Grants. Uh, you don't have to create a new account. You can log in on the one that you've already been using. But if you haven't, this is your first time, that next section right down there just shows that you can create, you know, type in your email, password, and you can create an account and you can get going on that application. And please refer to the Zoom Grants um, guide that is in, contained in the links there. 
Um, on our next info session, we will dive deeper into what that would look like on screen with you all. Um, but you can anticipate that the application process, uh, you know, you'll see um, your requests. Um, we have uh, questions and confirmations in there. Um, there's uh, opportunity to upload, not opportunity, <laughs> there's requirements to upload documents. Uh, and within the library, um, uh, Zoom Grants Library, we have uh, Zoom Grants logon instructions, um, procurement info, FAQ postings that we update weekly. Um, and yeah, before you submit, uh, print copy to save. So, you know, just make sure before you submit everything that everything is filled out, um, that you're not missing any sections. But again, if you do need some technical assistance, we have options for you all. And we will, we have links, I think, on a later slide that, yeah, perfect, <laughs> perfect segue that shows uh, the opportunities for technical assistance. Um, so, you can, if you're having issues uh, with the interface, uh, just in general with Zoom Grants, um, there is the uh, email there for help uh, with Zoom Grants. Um, you can also call Zoom Grants uh, help desk for support, and you can submit a ticket uh, with that link there. Um, so any content related uh, things within Zoom Grants, um, you can email us at the Human Services Bus Ticket Program. Um, for, and the technical assistance deadline, again, is November 29th this year. Um, and previously spoke about um, the grant application and capacity building and consulting. Um, I've put the link there for, and that's, that's across um, our department in, in King County, the Department of Community and Human Services. These are a grant application assistance that we provide there. So a link to that team and to start um, that process to engage with them and receive that assistance, there's the link there. And a tip here is please, you know, as soon as you are able and ready to begin applying, just start now. Um, starting now doesn't mean you have to finish now, but starting now does give you time before the close date to, you know, fill out the application and make sure that you're getting giving us all the information that you feel is relevant. Um, prior to us um, reviewing and making selections for this program. And again, we will provide another opportunity to uh, have a Q&A with you all. Looking forward to engaging with everybody uh, in this program here. Um, but now we'll move on to uh, ticketing details. So. All right, thanks, Ken. Um, Absolutely. Ken got us through most of the yeah, most of the content that you'll need to know for the application, uh, but we wanted to talk also about ticketing and how that process works. Um, and, and with that, before I start, I just wanna to acknowledge too that um, we have some partners at Metro uh, who handle the ticketing process and the purchasing process. They're there to support you all. Um, and so they are, they're really the experts on uh, ticketing, purchasing, helping you with all of that. Uh, and, um, we have their contact info in a couple of the slides here in case you do need to reach out to them. Uh, uh, so just wanted to acknowledge, yeah, we've got even more people to, to support as you get your award and start purchasing tickets. Um, and so we'll just go over kind of the basics of, of ticketing today. Um, so uh, before we jump into the ticketing, um, this is just a little knowledge test. Um, so that we can uh, make sure folks know what they'll need to uh, complete before they go down to purchase their tickets. So there's two documents that you'll need to complete and return before Metro will accept your uh, ticket purchase order. And so these are the memorandum of agreement. And this is actually something that you will have access to in Zoom Grants post award that you can go in, read through and sign all in the Zoom Grants application. So no need to uh, print or mail anything, no, no paper copies needed. And then the authorized signature list. Um, this form lets Metro know who from your agency is authorized to purchase and pick up the tickets. And so uh, anybody in your agency who's going to, who, who may need to purchase tickets or pick them up should be on this list. And this one um, does have to be completed on paper with a wet ink signature. And then you can return this to Metro by mail or in person. Uh, I think a lot of agencies find it's easiest to submit this um, 
when they go down in person to pick up their their uh, ticket orders. So, so yeah, two key documents that you want to make sure you get through um, before before you do your first order and purchase. Uh, and so let's talk a little bit now kind of about the purchasing process and what that looks like and, and some of the different options you have. So um, you have a few options for how you can order and purchase your tickets. Uh, you can visit Metro office during their regular business hours, Monday through Friday at your convenience, and you can pay for and pick up your tickets the same day. We just want to let you know that if you do, if you do that, um, if you choose that option, there uh, might be a wait between when you drop off your order form and when the tickets are ready to pick up. Uh, so you can also mail your ticket order form in advance uh, and your payment information to Metro, and then they'll process the order once they get your, once they receive the form and then give you a call when it's ready for pickup and you can go down and pick up in person. And then the last option you have is to drop off your ticket order form and payment in person. Um, and then you can leave it there, Metro will process it, and then they can give you a call when it's ready for pickup and you can come back down to their office uh, in Pioneer Square. So a few different options um, and just wanna also call out that unfortunately we can't mail the tickets. Um, and so I know that's, that's a question that comes up frequently, but they do have to be picked up in person. Um, and we will give a lot of details in the award packet and a whole guide on purchasing to walk you through the process. So this is just a quick overview. Uh, and so let's talk about ordering uh, the ticketing details for 2023 program and some things to note and, a, and a, an exciting change uh, from our partners at Metro that we want to share. So first, we just really want to call out the importance of not sending credit card information over email. Uh, you can definitely pay by credit card, um, MasterCard or Visa. That's perfectly fine. And you can... Uh, put that information into your order form that you mail in. You can call Metro to give them that information or do it in person, but just whatever you do, please don't send that by email because we don't have a secure system to take your credit card information and we really don't want to put your agency uh, at any risk. Um, and then some exciting news from Metro, uh, as people might know, starting September 1st of this year, 2022, riders 18 and younger can now take transit for free thanks to Move Ahead Washington. Uh, which is a statewide transportation funding package. So uh, this means that there's no need to purchase youth tickets anymore. If you do have youth tickets left over from previous awards, uh, contact that Metro sales office email address and or you can call down the number on the ticket order form and they can help you figure out um, what to do with those, those tickets. Uh, and so as you're filling out your request in the RFP, just make sure you take this into account with the new fare structure that you won't need to purchase any youth tickets. And so let's talk a little bit about the order form itself and what that looks like now that there are some changes. So, um, so the top of the order form is just uh, basic information about your agency. Um, and then what we wanted to call out is Obviously, Metro Transit fares, there's two options now for bus tickets. There's the adult tickets uh, that are 275 face value. And then there's the senior and disabled persons tickets that are $1 face value. Um, and those uh, senior and disabled person tickets require um, a regional reduced fare permit uh, for that $1 fare. And then youth free, so no need to buy tickets for youth anymore. Um, for method of payment, uh, like I said, you can use Visa or MasterCard, that's perfectly fine. There's a space on your order form to fill in your credit card number and expiration date. Uh, you can also pay by check or money order payable to King County Metro. But again, just don't um, send that credit card information over email so that we can uh, avoid any, any risk to your agency there. Uh, and then there are a few different options for ticket book types that we'll get into in a little more detail on the next few slides. Um, but we've got the adult tickets and the RRFP tickets, those senior and disabled tickets. And then we've got uh, Sound Transit Link tickets and kind of a bundle package of Sound Transit Link tickets and Metro tickets. And these are all at different price, price points to you. So uh, we'll talk about um, what that looks like and how it's debited against your award allocation on the next few slides. Um, but 
just uh, before we get into that, one more reminder, please don't send your credit card information by email. I know uh, it might seem a little redundant at this point, but we just want to make sure we're keeping your info safe. Um, all right. So now we're going to get into some examples of uh, uh, what the ticket book sales uh, look like, what price you would pay, and then how that's debited against your award allocation. Um, since you are paying a fraction, small fraction of the face value. Um, and depending on the ticket book type that you buy, the debit against your allocation will look a little different. And so we'll start with kind of a simple one. Agency A is awarded an allocation of $55 and would like to purchase 10 adult books. And so how much allocation will Agency A have left after that purchase? Agency A will pay $5.50 for each adult ticket book. And so purchasing 10 adult books, uh, Agency A will pay $55. With uh, an allocation of $55, that uh, would use up the full all allocation. Uh, and then we've got uh, combination Metro Sound Transit link sales. Uh, and so this is a great option, especially if you know folks are going to need um, light rail and bus to get to appointments and get to services. Uh, and so in this case, Agency B is awarded an allocation of $100, and then Agency B would like to purchase 10 combo books. And so uh, after that purchase, Agency B is going to pay $650 for each book, and so with 10 books, they're going to pay $65, uh, where this is a little different from those Metro only ticket books is that um, the agency will pay 650, but the allocation will be debited $8 for each ticket book. And so with 10 books, they'd be debited $80, uh, and that would leave $20 left of their allocation. And then lastly, uh, we want to talk about just the, the option to buy only sound transit link ticket books. So let's say agency C has an award of $100. And then agency C would like to purchase 10 sound transit link books, not the combo ones with the Metro, but just, just the sound transit link books. Uh, and so uh, with that, agency C is going to pay $650 for each link ticket book. And so with 10 ticket books, they'll pay $65 total. But um, the amount debited against the allocation is going to be zero in that case. So that the, the purchases of just the Sound Transit Link ticket books do not affect your allocation at all. They're not drawn down from that. Um, but you still have access to that reduced, uh, reduced ticket price for those books. So. A few different options for how you want to buy tickets. This will totally depend on your program, who you're serving, what kind of transportation uh, they need to get uh, to get around and, and get their needs met. So um, again, we're happy to talk about this more. And we've got our our folks at Metro who are the, really the experts on the ticket sales and can help walk you through uh, the options that you have here. Uh, and so uh, I'm sure there's a lot of questions about the ticket sales. We've got a great FAQ in Zoom Grants that has questions from previous years. Um, a lot of uh, what you might be wondering will probably be in there, but like Ken was saying, we'll have another info session for you all uh, to make sure that we have more chances for you to raise your questions um, live with us in person. And uh, of course, you can always reach out to um, our team uh, at the bus ticket program, you can reach out to Metro's ticket sales email address. Um, and just keep in mind that the deadline for technical assistance with the application is uh, November 29th. So uh, yeah, with that, we just want to thank you for your interest in the program. Um, I know that these tickets uh, go out to a lot of different agencies that provide all kinds of services, organizations, government entities. Um, and so we really appreciate you taking the time to do the application and um, make sure that the folks in your programs have access to this, this resource. Uh, and so that, that concludes the presentation for today. Um, like I said, we'll have another info session coming up. We'll get some information about that out. This recording is gonna be available in Zoom Grants as an attachment along with uh, 
the slides that we presented on today, the FAQ, uh, and the guidelines for the RFP. So uh, look to Zoom Grants for your resources, reach out to us with questions, and uh, let us know how we can support you in the process. Yep, thank you everyone. I echo everything that Devin just said, and uh, please reach out um, to, especially to the links that we provided if you are needing any technical assistance um, and just questions in general, uh, feel free to reach out to any of the appropriate parties. But um, look forward to working with you all and definitely looking forward to engaging with you all on the next uh, info session. Thank you. Thank you.